Hallelujah. Praise God. Welcome to Integrity Christian Center Friday night pre-service prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. Welcome all God's precious dear people. Those of you who'd like to come on down and pray with me, come on down. Hallelujah. Father, we just enter into the secret place of the Most High God. We come to worship you and honor you. We reverence your holy presence. We honor you in this house and give you praise. Just begin to lift up holy hands before the Father. Lifting up holy voices in this house. Oh, the richness of your goodness. Amor man Every mozo chapanene to ramandorie. We're stirring ourselves up. Asho ramando lo bo raman mando. We declare that you are working and moving in our lives. So ramashevereditora. So raman mando abundantly. Avre me severedito ramando. I declare that God's people are blessed in Jesus' mighty name. They're blessed, they're blessed, they're blessed, they're blessed. Shopora man severa mando. We're the blessed coming in and the blessed going out. Shomora man severa mando. You open our eyes to see a moon shemeria non day. Avro bo chevre man so raman chevereditora. We're calling for your anointing in this house, your presence. Fill this place, amando raman chevereditora. Ezo raman de leveredici ramandorie. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You're surrounding us with your glory. More aware of your glory in this house. Mighty witnesses. Every mash, every most supernatural supply. Every man so raman shepedamanda. You called us glorious, so more raman shepedamitora. Ezo more man shevre man so ramando. We're calling out a masakeria nandorie. Calling out for strength and security. I'm declaring Psalms 91 over this congregation, this house, our church, our family, our homes, our cars. In Jesus' name, Shevre Mansora Mancho, protecting our Asoche Menenito Ramaseke Ramandore. Avrobochepe, we're rising up as a mighty army. Shamore soldiers that are marching in tune in line among the levedicho for a masorie. Atresi kiso pochra maso tora mando. Avrebe cheperini tonde. We're getting stronger and stronger by the minute. Our eyes are open to see. Kamora man shamora. You, Lord, are more than enough, Hamashakeramando. More than enough for Ramase. Ah, so you're more than enough for me. Come on, anom de leveramashe. Pouring through our lives, amor emeshe peremito. Your glory, amashe perema, shining through this place. Every mosho poramando. We are mighty witnesses for our King. 
sharing the light of the gospel everywhere we go adon dan damban zebede jesus is the most appeared in itora etremondo la masevere di tremandong day your healing anointing and power flowing through us your the mashapora man severe nito hallelujah hallelujah we're a second book of acts church amore mesora revival fires are flowing in this house your healing anointing is permeating this place shevre mando remese che da pasore avro moce de veranan sore you're instructing us according to your word shamana nando le me che topo shape signs and wonders are following your people signs and wonders are following your word shore mande le veredi sapore ducere you are anointing us to see things amana non de ma sapore rich anointing overflow overflowing this house this place Every man shevre mosto raman severe di chida dando avre boche ara bochre we have readiness readiness of heart and mind aman anon de vera di chida dora your hand of anointing is upon this congregation severe mo remanzo non de nanze meste bi chitora se manutre man se merenita nando avre boshe perenitora ma i plead the blood of jesus over every member of this congregation and the lebede da pore be siti di de boko reba avre bedi di chiko pore ba za pore duce on the workplace on the job about town among the lebede di de pore nando We are bright shining witnesses amore mede de mede namando our steps are ordered of you lord aman shaman anonde evre man donde as we fear absolutely nothing shemani tisibere ha ha hallelujah 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 Asopora man shemeda mando we are wearing bright and shiny armors shamone ne shebede di dora mando avre man so raman sevesta mora mando every mo so cro so sheveta mote your will your way your purposes your plans are being done in this congregation amaso pora man shapora mando calling us up to higher places and higher grounds amore man shevera mi sora man shamana note every man sora ma shekera mando raman so every the heavens are open amashe te mano todo do boko tere ama socorre mi chamane evre ma socorre ne to avre man socorre man severa non rain down pour down upon us in this place an shebru popura an shamora man shamora man shamora man somora mando pour down rain upon us socorre ma she a flowing river aman shebeda nito raman sora every boso raman shevre man soto ramando avre bo shevre ma every blessing aman shemena nandore an sora ma she surrounding us a sore be chikira man sora man shopora mando We're drawing upon that amasute abri bochana mani sora man shapore pouring down upon us your rain 
every man so raman shevre man so raman shevere nitora we're going higher we're going to higher higher grounds and higher places in jesus christ so much love is flowing through this house today. Peace, peace, peace like a river. We're lifting you up. Amandolebe, this mighty presence in Jesus' name, we're lifting you up. Aboreman, Shevreman, Severi, Chido, stay. Ajido, Che, Azocho, Toto, Toto, Che, Teto, Poche. An Shevre, so Poche, Samo, Tede, Pasto. Just let those mighty rivers flow, flowing out, flowing out. Remani nida da non dele vere nidora, lovre bo reman shevere rigi de dore. Avreman shevro bo so taraman shevere nidora, pouring out upon us. You're pouring out upon us, so for Every emotion, man and a man, so for We're calling for a mighty move of your spirit. Shevre bore man, shevri man, so man, do man day. Akito rama, akito rama, se grobo rama, so edge di 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 bi kite di di do rama de. Aso chipana no se peredi cho paredu chide de. A paredu chide de sa paredu chipana no te. A mighty river, a mighty outpouring of your spirit. O oh, living God, Reman so Rema Tora Maha, your word has seba so coche perema. Your word says a mighty up outpouring of your spirit in these last days. Shamon de leve, we're expectant, we're believing God for it. We're calling for it. Shamo Raman Shepeda Mando. Ansevri Bo Chamana Mando Mbo Samo Ramanda Ma Shepeda Mando. We're not wet wood. We have a fire burning deep down in our souls. Amo Raman Shepeda Mando. A mighty river pouring out. Amo Raman Shepeda Mando. Fiery burning among the levera ma, the spirit of the living God. Oh, so chepe mandon don bon champan ton tamaha. Every pocha patama so kuchure. Elambada dora ma say we're being elevated in this place. Oh, rebe chepana non de levera man, so reman chepe da mando. A fire of your spirit. Spirit, a fire of the Holy Ghost, a man shamon anando, ando lebe keda mashe peda mando. As we lift up the mighty, powerful name of Jesus, man don de lebe, man don de lebe, man don de lebe. And she bore a man sevri bocha pato, a chico poto por a base kera mando, a she bore a man so por a man severe mito, a dore man chevre man so por a man so mor a mando, a severe mo shepeda mando remete de bico, a zebeda ma matora ma, every man a man get a fiery burn. Burning power of the spirit, burning in your spirit, Shomora Masa Manana, a burning fiery Amashapora Manso, 
Apasokora ma passion of flame. Sebo do boko boda boko pora do chipakare de tora boko po. A boko pola boko vaidido boko pora man shepera ma komote. Ma komote meke para do chide beke de mato. Amban don bon somon shamon se peke chapote. Every mosho po chapada do today. E grito montana man so pora maka man so mora mando. Must come down in Jesus' mighty name on so raman shepeda baha. Every boat cho pora man sheri bo ramando. Alive with power and promise so mo chamana ne tora.
Somebody shout amen. Come on, hallelujah. Yeah. Find five or six people near you. Go ahead and greet them and tell them it's better than it ever was. Better. Hallelujah. 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 So glad that you are here. Hallelujah. God is good to us. We must rejoice tonight and be exceedingly glad that wisdom has prevailed in the Supreme Court and they have ruled against murdering unborn babies as a federal law. Now, just so you know, they can still do that trash in certain states, you know, that want it. That's why it matters who you vote for at every level, at absolutely every level. Um, let, me find a, let me find a gentle way to say it. I know we're streaming. You can take it, I think, but 
I'm, I'm, deep, I'm digging deep trying to find a gentle way. I can't find it. Stop voting for pathetic, demonized pigs and sending them to the House, the Senate, the Presidency, the Governor's House, the State Assembly, the State Senate, mayors, any, any, you, name the, you name the level, stop voting for idiots. Stop voting for idiots. But the idiots that people voted for and sent to our state legislator, late legislature has decided that in California they, they knew this was coming, so they wanted to pass a law that you can, listen to this, this is as nasty, as murderous, as vile, as demonic as it gets. Not only uh, do, are they passing a law to make abortion legal in California up to birth, but up to 28 days after birth. Yeah. Um, so stop voting for Democrats. Sorry. They're a wicked. They stand for everything that's an abomination to God and wicked and vile. Who else would think of such murderous, nasty things? The killing of the unborn. Just imagine that. We know we've had over 60 million babies aborted in America. 60 million. That's the ones they've counted. So we have a reason to be glad, though, that things have changed uh, today. However, what I am also taken aback by is that sitting congresspeople, senators, um, interestingly, they're all in the Democratic Party, are calling for violence. doing nothing to protect Supreme Court justices whose lives are threatened? Makes you wonder what kind of murderous spirit you have on you and in your party that you want to promote such wickedness and violence. Well, we denounce it in the name of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus regularly over our congregation and this church family. I hope you do it over yourself. I hope you do it over your children and grandchildren. I mean... I take time to go through all my kids, grandkids. I mean, you know, I do. It, it takes a while, too, with them. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you got to have some time commitment, man. But oh, I plead the blood of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, the angels of God surround about them, keep them safe wherever they are, wherever they go, as they travel about, uh, in their homes, wherever they go. So, but we have a reason to rejoice. So let's do it. Father, we just thank you that this has turned today after. 50 murderous years in our nation as a federal law. We thank you that it has been overturned. We give you praise and thanksgiving for it. We ask that this murderous spirit lift from our land in Jesus' name. And anybody that supports such ridiculous things, wants to murder unborn children or, for that matter, attack and hurt other people, May they all be removed from office speedily in Jesus' name and replaced with godly people in our land from the highest level to the lowest level in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. You may have think, I thought I just gave you a political speech. I did not. Um, you can dispute it. Just All you got to do is give me the facts. And if you can't and you can't, then don't bother messing with me on it. How's that? Got a lot to minister to you with tonight, but before we get started on all that, we're going to have Mr. Cinda come, update us on some announcements, tell us all the good things coming up in Jesus' name. Give. Good evening, church family. It's good to see you on this fine Friday night. Aren't you glad that we have a pastor who'll tell us the truth? Call it like it is. I love that. All right, let's read our focus verse for June. Psalms 145, verse 18. We'll read this together at the count of three. One, two, three. The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him, to all that call upon him in truth. Amen. Amen. 
Focus book for the month of June is the book of Ephesians. You read this 10 times or more in addition to your daily Bible reading calendar. And then call us and let us know, and we'll get you a certificate for your dedication. Amen. Amen. Diligently developing faith for healing. Praise God. Sundays, 8 a.m. at Faith School. Come on out. Everyone needs faith for healing because you're going to deal with it to your, with yourself, with your loved ones. Everyone needs to know this. So come on out, 8 a.m., and let's diligently develop faith. Praying for rain. Come on. Sundays, 10 a.m. I'm guessing this starts Sunday. Let's do this. I love it. And the holiness factor tonight, 7.30s. This has been our series for a couple of weeks, 7.30s on Friday nights. And I hope you're ready, buckled in for tonight. I'm excited. Grace and Dignity of a Lady is our Daughters of the Light meeting. This is our women's ministry, Daughters of the Light, if you don't know about it. Um, Pastor Brenda always shares a mighty word from the Lord, teaching us how to be women of God. So come out tomorrow, 11 a.m., Saturday, June 25th. Invite your friends. Invite your family. Everyone is welcome. And let's learn what the Lord is saying to us as ladies. Amen. Grand opening, Friday, July 1st, for Fridays at Holy Grounds. So we need some help to get this going. The food's not going to serve itself. So let's get some people signed up. There's a sign-up sheet available to you in the lobby. We would love to have you involved. We would love to have your help. You'll meet a ton of people that you maybe haven't had a chance to meet yet. So if you are interested in helping, which I hope you are, please sign up in the lobby. Terry Mize will be with us Sunday, July 3rd at 10 a.m. I always love when he's here. I can't wait to hear what he's got to say while he's with us. You're welcome. June birthdays, yes. Little Miss Avery just turned three. We've got still left in the month, Gina Elodie and Nehemiah. Happy birthday to our church family. We love to celebrate your life with you. Amen, and we are pursuing his presence like never before. Love you. Praise the Lord, amen. Hallelujah. Good stuff ahead. Grab your Bible and turn to Psalm 18 with me tonight. Psalm 18. Hallelujah. I just got to reading some things, you know, today, and I thought, well, I'll just go ahead and uh, read a little bit more today. How's that? Hallelujah. Psalm 18, verse 28. Tell me when you're there. Psalm 18, verse 28. For thou wilt light my candle. How many need the Lord to light your candle, huh? <laughs> Hallelujah. Now he's talking about being able to see in the dark stuff that's going on in the world. But some of you just need a fire lit under you in Jesus' name, a fire of the Holy Ghost. The Lord will light my candle... The Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. You don't have to live in the dark. You don't have to be confused and uncertain. That's not the plan of God for you. For by thee I have run through a troop, and by my God have I leaped over a wall. And as for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all those that trust in him. Do I have any people here that trust in the Lord? Yes. Yeah. For who is God save the Lord? Who is our rock save our God? It is God that girdeth me with strength and maketh my way perfect. These are good things to say about yourself. Say about your life. You're weak. He maketh my feet like hinds feet and sets me upon my high places. In other words, like a mountain goat doesn't slip in slippery places. Isn't that awesome? He teaches my hands to war so that, so that a bow of steel is broken in my arms. Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation, and thy right hand has holden me up, and thy gentleness has made me great. Thou hast enlarged my steps under me that my feet did not slip. I have pursued mine enemies and overtaken them, neither did I turn again till they were consumed. I have wounded them that they were not able to rise. They are fallen under my feet. How about the enemy of lack? How about the enemy of insufficiency? How about the enemy of... You know, just can't get through the week, barely making it. Mm, that's an enemy. It's under our feet. 
For thou hast girded me with strength unto the battle. Thou hast subdued under me those that rose up against me. And it just keeps on going. I was just having fun reading the Bible. I want you to know we serve a champion God, not a defeated God, not a loser, not a God who has no idea how to get through the week. He is more than enough regardless of the times in which we live. He is more than enough. He is more than enough. Say it. He's more than enough. I can, with God, I can handle the battles of life and come out in victory. How many are you victorious in Jesus' name? How many declare your life victorious in Jesus' name? Amen. We're going to receive our Friday evening tithes and offerings, and I want to encourage everybody to participate with us. And so I'm going to have the ushers come at this time and distribute those tithe and offering envelopes. I encourage you to raise your hand. Usher will put one in your hand. Please take one. Fill it out completely. Print clearly if you would. You can give by cash. You can write a check. Make your check payable to Integrity Christian Center ICC. The ways to give are all on the screen up there. You can text to give, cash app, PayPal, Venmo, mail it in, credit card. Uh, man, you just, you, there's no reason for you not to be able to support the work of the Lord at Integrity Christian Center. That is for sure. Hallelujah. We'll give you a few moments to complete those envelopes and prepare yourself to honor the Lord at his holy altar with the holy tithes and offerings because this is his holy house. And yes, I'm saying holy a lot because tonight I'm teaching on holy and unholy. So there you go. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Ushers, when you're ready, go ahead and come forward with the offering containers. come forward you still need to do it we'll give you time to do it we i probably am in a hurry you just did you look like you were all done and looking at me so are you ready or you're not ready if you're not ready that's all right i'll pray you come forward if you need to heavenly father we just thank you for the word of god we thank you that you are our shield our buckler you're our protector through you we have more than enough and we have the greater one indwelling us to put us over the top no matter what the circumstance, no matter what the situation. We believe, we believe, we believe your word and so we act on it and we thank you Father God that we have more than enough. You are our supply and we give you thanksgiving and praise for it in Jesus name. Shout amen real loud. Praise God. Take your seats, if you will. Friday night, we've been teaching on holiness, calling the series The Holiness Factor. The Holiness Factor. And so we spent well over 20 weeks talking about holy things, things of God that he considers holy. How many know it's important that we know these things? Yes. It's important to know how to live holy. But I'm understanding as time is moving on, how unholiness is also creeping into a lot of Christian lives and Christian homes and Christian families, perhaps because they don't know it's unholy. So as I began to feel like I was concluding the series, the Lord said, I didn't just say that a good preacher is supposed to teach God's people what is holy. He said, tell them what's unholy. And so I began to dig into the scriptures and I, I knew in my heart where to start a particular passage and... Um, it has been very in insightful as we've dug into it a little deeper than just kind of real, doing a real cruise through it real quick. So go to Proverbs 6 
And uh, that's where we will begin again tonight. Proverbs chapter 6. Now I announced, and I want to say again to anybody streaming, that I would recommend with today's service that get your kids in another room or something occupied with something else because I am going to deal with some things. I have hit on some of these things a couple of times, I'm sure, uh, during 20 years of pastoring here, but it won't be like I'm going to do tonight. And um, I need to have the liberty to speak straight. Are you okay with that? So we made sure that the children would not be inside the sanctuary. Um, We've occupied them. So uh, I'm going to teach scripture to you. Scripture. Scripture. A lot of it. A lot of it. I didn't want to do part two next week. I just didn't. I want it out. I want it put out there. We need to know exactly what God says about some things. We need to be blunt because the world is blunt. That's right. The world is in your face with this stuff day and night, day and night, including our children. And forgive me if I get a little angry about that tonight, but I'm, I'm really, when, when you're a parent and a grandparent and you see woke companies and woke government and woke school districts on purpose trying to pervert and pollute your children, shame on you for not standing up. Shame on you for not saying something. Shame on you for not upholding the scriptures and saying, no, we're not having this trash in our life, in my family. Thank you for your enthusiasm about my message already. But I am going to say some strong things uh, because they found them in the scripture, not because I made them up. It won't be be my opinion. Uh, If you're confused after reading on these scriptures... You're already confused. If you can leave here tonight thinking that was my my opinion was was ministered out, you already need some serious help. I'm being bold right now. You need some serious help. Because I'm going to show you what the Bible says. Now, we live in a time that... The progressives, always pushing for the envelope, the progressives. They started pushing it in our country for sure, believe it or not, before the Civil War in the 1800s. Now, why is it impossible for a true Christian to be a progressive? Because we base everything here. God's word doesn't progress, meaning it it, it doesn't change with the times. It's the foundation. The Bible says that God upholds the entire universe by the word of his power. So he never changes. The Bible, Jesus said, not one jot or tittle. In other words, not one, uh, you know, uh, dotted I across T, no comma, no period of God's word is ever going to pass away. So to be progressive, you have to abandon this. And that's why it was necessary to get it out of public schools. I'm amazed when you kick God out of school, kick the Bible out of school, kick prayer out of school, and then all of a sudden you have violence at school that wasn't there before. And then you blame God. You're not a bright person. You're not a bright person. We didn't have any school shootings when I was a kid. None. None. It was once we progressed and left this behind. We need a green new deal. No, we don't. God's already got a deal. He's upholding all things by the word of his power. It doesn't need to be changed. As soon as you leave this, then you're going to think you're going to solve it? You didn't create it. In what way will you solve it? Where did you get such greatness? If you don't like this, you're not going to like what I'm going to preach to you today. Did you find Proverbs 6? It's in your Bible. Been there all along. Hasn't changed. God hasn't changed his mind about it. 
Verse 16 of Proverbs 6 says, These six things does the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. Well, as we've studied this out, we've learned that this phrase, six then seven, is simply meant to point out that there's not a limit to six or a limit to seven. It's simply that once you open the door to one area of sin in your life, you'll start opening the door to other areas. It's a slippery slope when you start messing with sin. It always begins to capture you, enslave you, and pull you down. But what I want to point out is if anything is something God hates, why do you love it? Why do you fight to have it? Why do you fight to support it? And why do you get mad at me when I tell you stop supporting it? I've always wondered, how is that possible? If God hates it, why do you love it? Why do you finance it? If it's an abomination to God, why is it entertaining you? You all right? I'm just in my first verse. <laughs> these, these six things does the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. Let's read through it. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood. If that's not abortion. It's, a, it's more than just abortion, but if that's not abortion, you tell me what is. You can't get any more innocent than an unborn child. A heart that devises wicked imaginations. Feet that be swift in running to mischief. A false witness that speaketh lies. And he that sows discord among brethren. I want you to see all of these are things God hates. All of them are things God calls an abomination. And all of them are done with your eyes, your ears, your mouth, your hands, and your feet. You, you yielded your mind and your flesh to these things. You yielded to them for them to cooperate and operate throughout your life. It's a lifestyle of disobedience to God. Many Christians have learned to live that way. They actually have the gall to say, well, the way I see it. Pause right there. Could you please show me the verse where you're asked anywhere how you see it? Or where I'm asked, how I see it. It's not in the Bible. God tells you this is how it is. And this is how we live. So all of these things, though, because of keeping, keeping with my series, are things that God would consider unholy. Uh, lying is not a holy thing. Well, it was a good lie. No, it was a lie. It was just a lie. Yeah, it was just, it was, it was a lie. Cheating is still an unholy thing. You all understand that? I mean, most things people, people would get anyway. That's not right. You can't do that. It's not right. Especially if it's done against you. Somebody lies about you at work, causing you problems at work. You know that's an abomination right there now. Uh, you lie. What are you doing lying about me? Yeah, I'm in trouble at work and I didn't do anything. You're the one who did it, but you said I did it. Right? God hates that stuff. God hates that stuff. So if God hates it, what should you do? Hate it, hate it too. Amen. They're an abomination to him. Amen. Amen. I'm going to deal with some things tonight as we go through, and I want to make sure I've said this, not only this time, but I may say it other times as we go along. What, up, what opens up your life to demons whether that be demon influence, demon activity, demon oppression, and even demon possession, takes place by what you yield your body and mind to. You need to know that. What things you yield your mind and body to, what you do with your body, what you do to other people's body, what they do to your body. Thank you. Opens people up to stuff, demonic stuff, demonic activity, which generally becomes another open door, which then becomes another open door. And before long, we're into all sorts of things. So let's go back to verse 16 again. These six things does the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look, we covered that. A lying tongue, we covered that. Hands that shed innocent blood, we covered that. 
a heart that devises wicked imaginations. That's what we're going to get into today. A heart that devises, thinks up, wicked imaginations. Now, God gave you an imagination, by the way. Uh, a healthy imagination is a good thing, a healthy one. That's how you meditate the word. You begin to see yourself with that healing. You begin to see yourself with provision. You begin to see yourself as more than a conqueror when your life maybe has been beat up, but you meditate the word, and, and part of it meditating is that your imagination begins to go, and you say, I see myself strong. I see myself victorious. But a wicked, now pause for a second. This word wicked in the Hebrew means holy, uh, 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 oh, I'm sorry, means moral worthlessness. Wicked imaginations. Moral, get it? Moral worthlessness. In fact, have you ever seen, you know it was a thing for a while, especially way back in the early 80s, late 70s or whatever, wicker furniture. Remember wicker furniture? And wicker furniture was, was wood that they had twisted. That's where they got the word wicker. It's, it's twisted. Twisted imagination. Twisted imagination. I'm going to deal with that tonight. Real straight-like. You won't, you won't leave here going, I wonder what he was talking about. You will not be confused. We're going to deal with the spirit of confusion on some of this stuff, but you won't be. Wicked, twisted imaginations. Moral worthlessness moral worthlessness i mentioned earlier about the uh, california state legislature's uh, uh, promoting a law trying to get it signed to now not only abort babies up to birth but to murder them after they're 28 days old what kind of pigs think up stuff like that what kind of a mind would think up stuff like that you ever been to the hospital it's to see your baby, your niece, your nephew, your grandchild? You ever took them home, came to visit, they're one week old, and they're just little wee ones, innocent little things, and you're checking their nose and their lips and their ears, whether they have a lot of hair or no hair? Well, the pigs that some of California voted for want to kill them, give you the right to kill them. What kind of a mind does that? Ladies and gentlemen, that's twisted. That's twisted. Anytime you think of doing something vicious to somebody, maybe you're not, you're twisted. You're twisted. Something's jacked up with you. And the more you think on it, let alone practice it, I can promise you demons will visit your life. And over time, they will inhabit you. God didn't mean for you to be mean. God didn't mean for you to be someone who assaults others, who tortures others, who torments others. Wicked imaginations have no place in the life of Christians. But I'm going to deal with some other things tonight that have not only plagued our nation, are plaguing our nation, are now plaguing our children. And I'm going to be real straight. Amen. You're going to like me or not like me when this one's over, but you won't be confused about what the Bible says. Amen. That I can promise you. You won't be confused about what the Bible says. So everybody say... Wicked imaginations. Someone who devises wicked imaginations is someone who continually uses their imagination for evil, to plot against others, for ungodly fantasies, for impure thoughts, for devious activities. So then this person is managing and crafting sin in their mind. Managing and crafting sin in their mind 
And God absolutely detests it. Go with me to Proverbs 24, please. Proverbs chapter 24. Proverbs 24, look with me at verse 8. I want you to look in your own Bible now. Come on. I want you to see these verses. I'm not making this up. It's in your, it's in your Bible too. Verse 8 said, He that devises to do evil shall be called a mischievous person. Well, oh, obviously. All right. But let me just read this to you from the Young's literal translation. It says, Whoso is, desi- is devising to do evil... Him they call a master of wicked thoughts. A master of wicked thoughts. That's how people get perverted, is they think wicked thoughts all the time. They never control their mind. They never control their imagination. And so uh, throughout the day or throughout the night, they're involved in every kind of fantasy and lustful and polluted, devious thoughts. By the way, men and women. I didn't expect this to be a service where we ran the aisles. This is a master of evil thoughts. Uh, Why do you allow your mind to wander there without stopping it? If you owned a dog and you let your dog wander in somebody else's yard or down the street and bite somebody, you'd be held accountable for that, would you not? So if you know to do that with a dog and keep your dog on a leash, how come you can't keep your mind on a leash? How come you let your mind go to every kind of polluted and perverted and wicked thing? Most people would not want their own thoughts to be known by anybody else, but somebody else knows them. His name is Jesus Christ. You're not sneaking it past him. Are y'all listening to me? These are people who are a master of wicked thoughts. Go to Psalm 36. Psalm 36. I want to show you a number of verses here. Psalm 36. After a while, you can tell what people think on because of what they talk about. Because of where their actions lead them. Because of what they accept or embrace. I don't see any problem with it. Show me the verse where you get to decide whether there's a problem with it. God told you it's an abomination. There you go. There you go. Then you and I have to decide I'm going to live holy or I'm not going to live holy. There's, There's not a gray area. It's either holy or unholy. It's either holy or unholy. It's either, it's either clean or unclean. You can't be part clean. Right? I don't mean to be vulgar, but, you know, I washed my left armpit, but I didn't wash my right one. I'm good to go. No, you're still nasty. Now, how come we understand that, but we don't understand it in other areas of life? You, you hear me? Psalm 36, look at verse 4. He devises mischief upon his bed. Uh-oh, we're going to go to your bedroom with you now. <laughs> he devises mischief upon his bed. He sets himself in a way that is not good. He abhorreth not evil. In other words, while they're laying in bed, their thoughts are wicked, immoral, nasty. That guy I saw at work today, that girl I saw today. And nowadays, you could be a guy and thinking about the guy you saw at work today. Or you could be a girl thinking about the girl you saw at work today. This is better preaching than your amen. I'm finding these verses in the Bible. I'm not making any of it up. And here these people are. May they not be Christian people. But they're devising wicked imaginations on their bed. 
Oh, I'm hoping this message goes far and wide. Are you all listening to me? Not just plotting violence or wickedness, that would include that, but I'm talking about unholy sexual thoughts that will cause you to go down a pathway that will cause you problems for the remainder of your life. You can't be, let me just say it, you cannot be a sexual pervert and be unscathed by it. You're not going to chase down these wicked imaginations without finding a way to act upon it. Whether that is heterosexual or homosexual or bestiality. It's a freaky world right now. God is love. Is that correct? Is that in the Bible? Is that a Bible verse? Is that found as a pattern throughout Scripture? Yes or no? You have Bible for it? Then this garbage about love is love? It can't be both ways. Because if God is love, God would know what love is. Tell me when you're confused about my message. I said, if God is love, see now, listen to me, it's nauseating. This woke stuff with these woke corporations and this woke garbage, including uh, city governments, state governments, national governments. People are sending me photos from their police department where they have this rainbow thing. By the way, the rainbow was God's idea about his covenant. It had nothing to do with, with you being involved in some sort of perversion. But they've got their police car now all you know, rainbowed up and with love is love on the back window. Love is love. Thinking they're being woke for, our, for your city. You're going to read some verses with me in a little while and you're going to find out you just cursed your city. You just cursed your city. No, love is not love. God is love. God is love. So whatever he divine, defines as a love relationship, that would be accurate. Anything else is an abomination to God. Y'all, y'all doing okay? Yes. This is going to be fun tonight, isn't it? 36.4. He devises mischief upon his bed. He sets himself in a way that is not good. Not good. He abhors not evil. Instead, he thinks on it, dwells on it. She thinks on it, dwells on it. The New Living Translation says, they lie awake at night hatching sinful plots. I know that lady's married, but I'm going to hit her up tomorrow when I get to work. Their actions are never good. They make no attempt to turn from evil. No attempt. No attempt. You can write this verse down for the sake of time. I won't have you turn there. But it's the book of Micah chapter 2 verse 1. Write that one down. Micah chapter 2 verse 1. Micah 2 1 says this. Woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. These are people that are using their time laying on their bed to think nasty, wicked, evil, perverted stuff. There's no leash on their mind. There's no control. And they think it's okay because nobody else knows. But Almighty God knows and he is not pleased. I said, he is not pleased. Woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. When the morning is light, they practice it because it is in the power of their hand. They begin to live it out and walk it out. So if God hates this type of activity, shouldn't you? Shouldn't you? Let's go to the book of Romans chapter 1. I'm going to preach some things that if I were simply north of the border preaching, I would be shut down. 
because they have, not the California border, but the national border. Who knows, you know, Oregon's a trip. <laughs> I'll just be honest with you. you know, Washington's worse. I preach in these places, so I know, but uh, I'm referring to the nation of Canada, where even covering verses like we're going to get into tonight is forbidden. Think about that, the government telling you what Bible verses you get to read and preach. Think about that. And if you think they don't want to do it here, if you think that most of the stuff that's happening in our nation isn't anti-Christ, isn't anti-gospel, isn't anti-local church, wake up. And who are the people mad at because of Roe v. Wade being overturned? Local churches. Why? Because we stand up for life. What an evil people we must be to stand up for life. Wow. Wicked imaginations. Romans chapter 1, it's still in the Bible. God hasn't changed his mind about it. So let's read it tonight. Verse 21. How many know some of the verses I've already read? Or are they catching you and going, whoa, whoa. There's some strong verses here. We'll, we'll wait till you get here in the New Testament, book of Romans. Chapter 1, verse 21. Because when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations. What happened to them? Their foolish heart was darkened. After a while, the way you see life is through a lens that has been darkened. You've rejected the knowledge of God. You, you, you knew God. You knew what he wants, but you started making excuses. Well, I just think, I don't see a problem with, I don't, I don't. I, who? And over a time, their foolish heart, they kept yielding to those wicked, vain imaginations. And before long, their foolish heart was darkened. I don't remember what we were doing now. It was a couple of days ago. Um, I had my sunglasses on. We had just come in from running some errands. And uh, so with my sunglasses on, I walked into a dark room and I said to my wife, hurry, flip on the, the light or get these glasses off me because I can't see anything right now. I was holding some stuff. My arms were full. And so I couldn't hit the light switch and I couldn't get the glasses off, but I couldn't see a thing in there. And it reminded me of this verse. It's like walking in the dark with the dark glasses on. Can't figure out how come I don't understand anything about this. Right. Foolish heart was darkened. You, you sure you're going to be able to handle all this tonight? Because some of you already, you're making me wonder. I don't, I, I don't know. I just don't want, I, I don't want you to swallow your tongue or anything tonight. I want you to hang with me now. <laughs> Stick with me. We're reading Bible verses. When our current administration decided to appoint a homosexual as a transportation secretary and deal with the supply chain, you're going to read verses before we're done tonight that a spirit of confusion comes on you. You would have to have a spirit of confusion to be a homosexual. So nobody with a spirit of confusion has answers. They can't solve anything. Their foolish heart is darkened. What would they get? How could they possibly help? So has the supply chain been fixed? No. Not by a million years. You, you, you got confusion running it. Doesn't even understand what the problem is, let alone a solution to it. So the more woke we go and the more corrupt we go, don't you think there's going to be more confusion and more problems that are unsolvable by these people? I mean, everything can't be Putin's fault. Right? No baked beans, Putin. No straws, Putin. At some point, even the brain dead people have to know that that's stupid. That's just flat stupid. So 21 says, because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations. And their foolish heart was darkened. Listen. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. 
And they changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image make, made like to corruptible men and to birds and to four-footed beasts and creeping things. So since I can't worship the true God, I need to worship something so I'll make one up for myself. And they became idolaters because somewhere they didn't control this. And their imaginations ran wild until their heart was darkened. And now they're so confused that they think they could... People, listen, all over the world are worshiping some nutcase thing that they made out of paper mache, concrete, wood. Lester Summerall one time went into a temple. I don't remember what country it was. And they had their idol there. And somehow the idol's arm had fallen off. So he walked in and was talking to whatever the administrator or chief priest or whoever he was, you know, ask him about it, you know. So what do you get from this idol? Oh, he may heal us. He may. Oh. Well, what happened to his arm there? Well, I, yeah, it broke off. Well, I'll watch him fix it. Let's watch him fix it. Let's get him, put it back on. I mean, if he can't help himself, how's he going to help you? I mean, your idol's all busted up there. If he can't help, if he can't, if it can't help itself, your bird there has lost its wing. If it's worthy of worship, surely it can put its wing back on. How many are you seeing what I'm saying here? You get goofed up in your head. Wherefore, watch this. God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own heart. It just continued to be a slippery slope. And then it went on to say, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. To dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Who changed the truth of God into a lie. I was made this way. I was born this way. That's a lie. That's a lie. Nobody was. So far with our large group of grandkids, all the ones that were born male are not confused about it. They grunt and make motor sounds. They play motorcycle, army man, airplane noises. <laughs> They were born that way. All the girls love their little dollies and they look in their face and they talk to them. They can't even speak very many English words when they're, they're chitty chattering right to that little dolly. And, blah, 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 blah. and they like to paint the makeup on their faces. They're not one bit confused. So a spirit through some demon inspired person with wicked imaginations has to pervert that. Because nobody was born that way. You change the truth of God into a lie. Reading Bible verses here, folks. Hang on, because I'm going to hit on Disney here in a little while, and you're, not really, you're really not going to be happy then. <laughs> Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature. More than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Why would God withhold this from me? If he truly loved me, I could be a pig and a pervert. He loves me. You're a pig and a pervert. He does love you, but he didn't, yeah, he didn't make this. You're, you're serving the creature. And for this cause, God gave them up. This is the second time God's given them up to something. He, he did it in verse 24. Now he's doing it in 26. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use. The natural use. What was your body made for? Another woman? No. Women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise, also the men. Likewise, also the men. Leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust one toward another. 
Evil spirits had to get involved. It's not natural. Your wicked, vile imaginations polluted you and a red carpet was rolled out for evil spirits to start visiting you and suddenly you accepted something that's an abomination to God as though it was normal. The scripture says otherwise. Burned in their lust toward uh, uh, another, men with men, working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meat. In other words, they are going to get a payday. It happens every time. They're diseased. They're infirm. I could, I could even get more graphic. I just choose not to. Nobody comes out of this normal and unscathed. Nobody. Nobody. And even as they... Here it is again. Even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge... God gave them over, third time, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. So then sexual perversion, all forms of sexual perversion, homosexuality is considered someone who's been given over to a reprobate mind, not a normal mind, not I was born this way. It's normal. It's not normal. It's a reprobate mind. Now listen, I'm not against people i'll help them get free but i got to tell you the truth and we can't we can't continue to pretend like this stuff is okay and then go to movies and support the movie while we get entertained by homosexuality or we watch the stupid sitcom with it in it or we finance these pigs like disney well i know you're going to do what you want to do because i've thought about other things that couldn't have been more clear and you went ahead and did what you wanted to do so i know you're going to do what you want to do anyway but I'm still going to tell you. I'm still going to tell you. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind and to do those things which are not convenient. It's not normal. Being filled with all unrighteousness. Didn't say anything about holiness and blessing. And No, they're filled with all unrighteousness, with fornication, with wickedness, with covetousness, with maliciousness. They're full of envy, murder, Debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters. Boy, doesn't that sound like America today? Yeah. Haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things. Inventors of evil things. You know, things like when I send my kid to kindergarten, they can choose what gender they want to be. Now corporations, you're required to tell them what your pronouns are? Jack, I'm a full-grown man. You figure it out. In fact, I have to tell you, I'm a he, I'm a him, it's his. You're a pervert. I shouldn't have to tell you that. I shouldn't have to start my conversation with you by explaining that to you. What, pervert, what perverted things have happened to our nation? That that's the way you get into a corporation and these are things you have to discuss? You doing okay in here? Uh, I hope so. Backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents. So now we won't tell the parents that you're a girl but want to be a boy. You didn't want to be a boy until you went to school and they started polluting you. Without natural affection. It's normal for a girl to want to be a girl and grow up and want to be with a boy. It's, nor it's natural for a boy to want to be a boy and grow up and want to be with a girl. It's unnatural to do something different. I'm reading Bible verses to you. They may not be your favorite verses, but they're still right here in the Holy Scriptures. Without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affections, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death, whoa, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. So I guess we won't be going, I'm talking about me and my wife, to the Buzz Lightyear homosexual Disney promotion.
And why is Disney again fighting on the political side of transgender and stuff being taught to small little children from five to eight? Why is Disney taking all of their wealth to promote such perversion? Why do they want homosexuality and other kinds of vile things in their cartoon cartoons? See, we used to hear Disney and think family friendly. Not today. They're an enemy of families. They're vile and polluted. Mondays, this doesn't always turn up, Mondays has been our day off for a number of years. And so we would look for things to do. And so we finally got a Disney pass and we went for a couple of years. It didn't go every week, but... You know, we, we'd go once a month or so to Disney. We, sometimes we didn't ride anything. We'd just go and walk around, have lunch, just be around people having fun. So over time, I got a Disney credit card so that we could buy stuff. You know, I got grandkids, and I used to take all my grandkids one at a time, sometimes two at a time, to uh, Disneyland. And let's go. Have some fun with the babies. It was just fun. Got tons of pictures through the years. And then it got creepier and creepier with these people. I don't think I want to pass. And so when they became so vile and polluted like they are right now, I mean, this Buzz Lightyear kisses another whatever buzzard or whatever they are, you know, <laughs> in the cartoon that's coming up or it's out today or whenever it comes out. Um, why did you need to put that in there? Explain that to me. Why do you need to promote perversion to children? Explain that to me. What kind of wicked imagination have you got going? Disney? So I called the credit card company. I said, I want this account closed immediately, and I want my name and my wife's name removed from anything that has Disney on it. Immediately. I will not support an abomination to God or help finance it. Because how in the world do you think they have the money? to come against things that are happening in our public schools today. It's because not just Christians, but a whole lot of Christians keep laying that cash out there and putting it in there. Come on, corrupt our families some more. Yeah, you shut them off at the cash register, they'll fix. But most Christians won't. Most Christians won't. They, I, did you hear me? Because some of you are thinking, I'm not going to either. I know, I know. The things on this list in Romans chapter 1 are the things that open a person up to demons. They open people up to demons. Why would you purposely take your child to be corrupted? This will tick you off too. I could not recommend anymore sending your child to Satan's youth group. Now, every school district is not Satan's youth group for... I, I don't believe that, but a lot of them are. Nor do I believe every teacher is, for goodness sake, I don't believe that at all. There's some good Christian teachers who pray with their kids and lay hands on their kids and do all kinds of stuff to help them live for Jesus. Seriously, great people. But man, the system is getting corrupted fast, fast. I mean, I get, I get information from people all over the country now. Can you believe I can now because we choose to have wicked imaginations and let the people who are in power with their wicked imaginations. Maybe the government will turn it around. Well, I don't know. Not the current one. I mean, you know, uh, it was on the news last week. Maybe you saw it. Maybe you didn't. But uh, your president's daughter who is a sexual pervert and a drug addict by her own admission and has to go through rehab continually accidentally left her diary at one of the rehab places the next inhabitor of the room found the diary under the bed sold it to the news media FBI freaked they wouldn't go after your by the way, there was no law broken. It wasn't against the law. But, the, but, you know, when the FBI becomes the personal police chief, it's kind of like the Gestapo yeah. of Hitler. 
They went after these people. But it got into the news media anyway. And one of the things that it referred to was she wrote in her diary one of the things that no doubt made her man hungry and so perverted was that her dad insisted on taking showers with her when she was a girl. You know that's not normal. You do know that, right? We're not talking about a bath when bathing a little baby. We're talking about you're old enough to stand up in a shower and remember it. And she writes about it in her diary. I don't think that's a person that's going to be able to help fix stuff. Why are your kids all perverts and drug addicts? And did you all, they put it up on TV about a thousand times. Did you all not see the montage of him sniffing all these young girls' hair and rubbing on people and all these women? And You didn't think there was a problem there? The dude showers with his girl. We got churches today who are having trans parties. It's not a church, by the way. I don't care what they call themselves. That's not a Bible-believing church. That's open to all kinds of demons. What other demons? We have more stuff hitting the news right now about denominations splitting up over this one topic, homosexuality and transgender stuff. Why is it an issue? Why do you not know what to do? Why do you not know what side to be on? How about like God's? How about like the Bible? But we're all woke, and so we're flying our rainbow flag at the front of the church now, or what they call the church. I'm not making this stuff up. What's wrong? What spirit got unleashed? That's why you got to start saying no to some stuff. At least take a a stand in your own life, for goodness sake. Amen. I'm not asking you to go do a campaign nationwide, but at least say, no, we don't go to that. No, we don't watch that. No, I won't finance that. I'm not going to help you pervert other people's families. Sorry, no more money for me. Amen. Hallelujah. From this passage we just read in Romans chapter 1, the Spirit-filled life New Testament commentary says this. It is important to maintain the divine perspective. Wrong behavior results from wrong thinking. That's that wicked imagination. Wrong thinking results from hearts hardened toward God. Hard-heartedness, hard-heartedness towards God results from the rejection of the revelation of God, meaning the Bible. I don't want the Bible. I don't believe it. I don't want to yield to that. Well, then now your heart hardens towards it, and you start accepting all kinds of things into your life, promoting them. The way I see it, it's not a problem. It's because you're hard-hearted. Sorry, but I'm being very blunt. And I'm not just talking to you here. Who knows where this thing will go? I'm looking forward to the feedback. I'm not a coward, so just so you know that. How do they fall into this kind of lifestyle? They slowly start rejecting portions of the scripture. We have preachers in America today who stand up in their services live and on TV and they'll rip out the entire Old Testament and say, this is not for us today. Who made you in charge of what is for us from the scripture today? What gall. But do you not think you have just initiated confusion and a spirit of rebellion against the things of God by doing that kind of stupidity? That verse isn't for us. That verse isn't for us. Before long, there's nothing for us. Stanley's son out in Atlanta let us know that the Bible really is not relevant for today. Then why do you preach and why do you have a church? Nothing you do is Bible. Get out. Stay out. Stay out of idiot places like that. Stop watching them on TV. And why do Christian television stations promote that? Do you have Stanley's program on? Ooh, we're going to get, we're going to subscribe to your network. Stupid. When you're against the Bible, you've hardened your heart. Something more will come from that. You're doing okay because I'm not really preaching mean, I'm just preaching bold. 
You got to know the difference between when I'm being mean and when I'm just being bold. You can't be a wimp and preach this stuff. I just got to tell you right now. One step at a time, people who reject the word begin to walk out of the light and they begin to walk into darkness. Go with me to the book of Genesis chapter 19. Genesis chapter 19, that is in your Bible. It has not been thrown out by real Christians. Genesis chapter 19. You doing okay? So what you give your body to opens you up to demons. What you give your mind to opens you up to demons. Listen to Lester Summerall. He's talking about this woman that came in to a service. And uh, she began to have demonic manifestations and voices begin to come out of her. You know, shut up, let me talk to her. Because see, they don't, even when you're possessed, you're not totally under their control. And so Brother Summerall said, how did this come on you? She said, who are you? She said, well, I was the youth, I'm the youth pastor at such and such a church. Youth pastor? Yeah. But I got concerned about young people getting involved with pornography, so I went to some pornography pornographic uh, movies and then as she went she decided she liked going before long see she's given herself to it are you hearing what I just said to you and now she's possessed by them don't tell me it's okay nobody knows but me oh yeah demons know Jesus knows let's read some Bible verses Verse 1, Genesis 19, verse 1. There came two angels to Sodom at evening. And Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. And Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them. And he bowed himself with his face to the ground. It was the custom of that time. And he said, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house. And tarry all night and wash your feet. And you shall rise up early and go on your ways. And they said, No, but we'll abide in the street all night. And he pressed upon them greatly, and they turned in unto him and entered into his house. And he made them a feast and did bake unleavened bread, and they did eat. But before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house round. In other words, they surrounded this guy's house, Lot's house, both old and young. You see a spirit permeating a city, don't you? Both old and young. All the people from every quarter. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which came into thee this night? Bring them out unto us that we may know them. The word know, when you find it in several spots in the King James, is not like, I'm Bob, I, I'm Tom. Adam knew his wife Eve and she conceived. It's a reference to sexual intercourse, sexual activity. Bring them out so that we can know them. You talk about a perverted city. See, see what would happen if we tear this out of our Bible because it's not convenient for us anymore? Then we don't know this stuff. Look for key words here. Watch. We wanted to know them, they said. They wanted to know them. Verse 6 and Lot went out at the door unto them and shut the door after him and said, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. Well, God made us. God made you that way, I know. No, he called it wicked, didn't he not? Yes. Everybody say wicked. wicked. This is where you get wicked imaginations from too. Do not so wickedly. Behold, now I have two daughters which have not known man. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you and do you to them as is good in your eyes, only under these men do nothing. For therefore came they under my, the shadow of my roof. And they said, stand back. And they said again, this one fellow came in to sojourn, and he will needs be a judge now. Uh, will we deal worse with thee? In other words, somebody else came into town, and uh, the, all the men 
got to him. And they pressed sore upon the man, even Lot, and came near to break the door. Man, that's, that's driven by demons right there. But the men put forth, the, this is the angels, they put forth their hand and pulled Lot into the house to them and shut to the door, and they smote the men that were at the door of the house with what? Blindness. Blindness both small and great, meaning young or old, so that they wearied themselves to find the door. Struck blind, they weren't quitting. Now they're just groping for the door. They're going to be perverts, and we want these men. See how you get driven by demons once you start opening the door to stuff? You all understand this was why judgment came upon Sodom and Gomorrah? They lived like pigs. They acted like pigs. Now, here's an interesting thought. Why was Lot there? You see, he traveled with his uncle Abraham. But as they began to prosper, Abraham's herdmen and Lot's herdmen began to have issues with one another. So instead of Lot saying, I'm going to fire any of you people that are causing strife. He decides to separate from Abraham. Abraham brought it up, said, well, you go this way, I'll go that way. I don't need strife with you. But what Lot should have done is said, wait, wait, wait. I'm only blessed because of you. I didn't separate. We're going, to, we're going to deal with this. But instead, Lot goes, huh. Whoa, they got good grass and water over there. He didn't even prefer his uncle, who was the one who got, he got blessed from his influence. He took it himself. He chased down. And the Bible said that he got as close to Sodom. He was living in the outskirts of the town. You get into the next chapter or so, and you find that he's living among them. He's now moved in. You think his family's not being corrupted and polluted by the choice that Lot made? Because when the angels came back to bring destruction, they said, judgment is going to fall on this place. Get your family and get out. He went to his married daughters and they mocked him. They mocked Lot. Now, where did you learn to mock your daddy? What, what, what culture were you listening to that when he tells you about holy things, you mock. They wouldn't go. So he escapes with those, these two daughters who would, that were just mentioned and his wife, but his wife couldn't follow simple instructions and turned back and turned into a pillar of salt. So Lot escapes with his two daughters. But we find out within a few verses of how perverted they had become from where Lot chose to live and what Lot chose to expose them to and you ought to read it you ought to read it uh, incest took place where did they get that idea where did it ever cross your mind because you expose them to people with wicked imaginations and so they begin to have wicked imaginations of their own and carried them out and carry them out. So maybe you should watch who and what you expose your family to. Back, this was Genesis. Now go back the other way to the book of Jude. Jude is right in front of the book of Revelation. Jude. You doing okay here? Just preaching Bible verses. Wicked imaginations. It's an abomination to God. It says he hates it. So he's not going to condone you having dirty thoughts, being dirty-minded, filthy-minded. Jude 7. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities round about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication... And going after strange flesh. Strange flesh. That's flesh you ain't married to. And according to the Bible, you can't get married except one man, one woman. Not two men, one woman. 
not any combination of weird stuff that you pervertedly come up with. One man, one woman is the Bible way. And thing else is strange flesh. Gave themselves over to strange flesh, set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Likewise also these what? Filthy dreamers. Filthy dreamers. Doesn't that sound like wicked imagination? Likewise, these filthy dreamers defile their flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. Hmm. That's right there in your Bible. That was what was taking place before Noah's flood. That's what was taking place in Sodom and Gomorrah. That's what is taking place around the world today. And if you speak up and say something, you need to be canceled. You're not woke enough. You're insensitive. I'm not being insensitive. I'm simply teaching you what's holy, what's unholy. Amen. Now, if you don't want to be unholy anymore, I'll help you. Right. That if you want to practice unholiness, well, that's not my fault. But I will still have to stand up and give an account for telling you the truth of the word of God. This is how you live holy. Do these things, that's unholy. We're not going to be filthy dreamers. We're not going to have wicked imaginations. Be perverted, polluted. Amen. Amen. Leviticus 18. Leviticus 18. You still with me? Leviticus 18, 21. And thou shalt not let, not let any of thy seed pass through the fire to Molech, which is an idol god, you know. People were sacrificing their children in a fire to these idol gods. You're jacked up, you understand? <laughs> Neither shalt thou profane the name of thy God, I am the Lord, and thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. Get back to me if you didn't understand that. It's an abomination. Amen. So it's not love is love. Amen. It's not the way you got it figured out. It's an abomination. Neither shalt thou lie with any beast to devile thyself therewith. Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down thereto. It is confusion. Defile not yourselves in any of these things, for in all uh, these the nations are defiled, which I cast out before you. And the land is defiled, therefore I do visit the iniquity. The, the what is defiled? Amen. Oh, now you get what I said about once you open something up, before long that city starts opening itself up to all sorts of perversions. That's why some cities are known for their perversions. Yeah. Help me remember. What's another name for Las Vegas? <laughs> yeah. San Francisco. Huh. You defile the land. That spirit gets unleashed. Hmm. I'm not done. Defile not ye yourselves in any of these things, for in all these the nations are defiled, which I cast out before you, and the land is defiled. Therefore I do visit the iniquity upon it, and the land itself vomiteth up her inhabitants. You shall therefore keep my statutes and judgments, and shall not commit any of these abominations, neither any of your own nation, nor any stranger that sojourns among you. For all these abominations have the men of the land done which were before you, and the land is defiled. That the land spew not you out also, when you defile it as it spewed out the nations that were before you. 
In other words, you get conquered. Your enemies defeat you. For whosoever shall commit any of these abominations, even the souls that commit them, shall be cut off from among their people. Therefore shall you keep mine ordinance that you commit not any of these abominable customs which were committed before you, and that you defile not yourselves therein. I am the Lord your God. That's just why once this stuff is unleashed, it defiles a whole city or a whole region, and corruption reigns. And before long, nobody is bowing their knee to Jesus. They're, they're bowing their knee. The city officials bow their knee to abomination. County officials bow their knee to abomination. And they'll mock Jesus Christ in the work of the kingdom of God. Yeah. Judges 19. Judges chapter 19. kind of nauseating learning about all this garbage isn't it but if we don't treat it as unholy we'll treat we'll begin to be sucked in by the culture and think well that's just their deal yeah. I don't like it but well God hates it God calls it an abomination so why are you financing it and keep going over that I guess judges 1920 Here's another time when a couple were traveling. They left late in the day. Long story, you have to read the whole chapter. They left late in the day, and so they come upon a city uh, as it's turning evening. No, and it's not like today where you get on your phone and book a room. So it was the custom of the time that kind people, kind-hearted people would let you stay at their house and uh, they'd take care of you and feed you and it was just a custom of being responsible to your uh, fellow man. And so this old man meets him in verse uh, 20. Judges 19, 20. And the old man said, Peace be upon thee, howsoever let all thy wants lie upon me, only judge or only lodge not in the street. So he brought him into his house and gave provender unto the asses and they washed their feet and did eat and drink now as they were making their hearts merry behold the men of the city certain sons of Belial sons of who? so God's not in it that means it's demonic beset the house round about this is hundreds of years after what happened in Sodom the spirit's still operating in people and they beat at the door and spoke to the master of the house, the old man, saying, Bring forth the man that came into thine house that we may know him. There it is again. And the man, the master of the house, went out unto them and said unto them, Nay, my brother, nay, I pray you, do not so wickedly. There's that word again. Seeing that this man be, is coming to my house, do not this what? Folly. So it's called wickedness. It's called folly. Behold, here is my daughter, a maiden, and his concubine. Them I will bring out now, and humble ye them, and do with them what seemeth good unto you. In other words, you're perverts, and you're not going home until you've defiled somebody's life. But unto the man do not so vile a thing. So it's wicked, it's folly, it's vile. But the men would not hearken to him, so the men took his concubine and brought her forth unto them, and they knew her and abused her all the night until the morning. And when the day began to spring, they let her go and she ended up dying. What kind of people would gang rape somebody? What spirit is that? What pollutions? What wicked imaginations? Y'all seeing where I'm going with all this? If God says he hates it, you better start putting a leash on your mind and cast down imaginations with the word of God with the power of the name of Jesus I don't think like this I don't dwell like this I don't have these kind of thoughts in my head it's wickedness it's folly amen hallelujah I have so much more I just think uh, I may have given you as much as you could consume 
Ephesians chapter 4 has some very insightful things about getting your understanding darkened. That will happen to you if you watch programming that not only permits but celebrates things that God says is sin. Your thinking will change. And you suddenly your, your feelings toward it begin to get... It's like being cauterized. You don't have the sensitivity. It's like as a guitar player... The more you play, the more your tips of your fingers are callous and you no longer feel the pain because it hurts a little bit when you don't have calluses yeah. to push down on the strings. But after a time, your, your fingers get calloused, no longer feel it. Doesn't bother you at all. Not a big deal at all. Same thing with watching something or participating with something or accepting it as normal. Your, your understanding will get darkened. You'll get twisted. But what we are doing to our children today, young children, where now they are trying to pass laws that you are just a kid and you decide you're a boy but want to be a girl and you can have surgery, puberty blockers, all this trash that our government wants to finance for people that they put a spirit of confusion on. I don't know if you read the the remarks of one uh, comedian who happens to be a liberal, not a conservative, who said, my God, when I was in third grade, I wanted to be a pirate. (laughs) I'm so glad they didn't schedule my eye being gouged out and my leg cut off and put a peg leg on it. But the geniuses that run our government think that it's a good idea to give some child some surgery because they're confused on what, they, what gender they are. What kind of parents do you have? What kind of school do you go to? Am I being too... No, I'm not, by the way. No, I'm not. Because it's about time somebody just stands up and just yeah. says this stuff. It's wicked imaginations and God hates it. It's an abomination to him. Stop participating in it and stop thinking it's okay. Well, everybody does it. Everybody doesn't make heaven either. Everybody doesn't make heaven. Cast down imaginations. You better stand with me. Cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why don't you just lift your hands for a moment, close your eyes, put your things down. Heavenly Father, we submit to you and to your will and your way. We are not going to let the perversion of the world get in our life because we're not going to let it get into our mind. We don't take entertainment from sexual deviants, pornography, perverts, We don't enter into conversations with people at work that don't serve God or in our family that don't serve God but are confused, have a spirit of confusion on them and have yielded to abominations. We're not not letting that on us. We're not letting our kids near it. We're not letting our kids near it. And I thank you, Father, that you lead us and guide us in these last days to escape the things that are coming on this earth. Thank you, the blood of Jesus protects us. We have the mind of Christ and the wisdom of God is formed within us. We're doers of the word. We submit to you. We go your way. Thank you that your angels surround about our families. Keep us safe. Keep us safe from... Not just evil doers as we drive and go about our business, but evil doers who want to influence us, want to corrupt our families, corrupt our thinking. Father, may we have a backbone to stand against stuff that's an abomination to God and stop financing it and stop supporting it and stop making excuses for why we do it. In the name of Jesus, amen. Now, before you're dismissed tomorrow, we have a Daughters of the Light event, and we need to move some things around and get set up for that. And one of the problems we have is that we have a lot of men who don't help, but all the women do it. 
young and old. So we want you women to help us. We surely do. But I'd like to have all the men please be sure to stay and help out. Let's get this place set up. And it uh, shouldn't take very long to do so. Amen. Call you blessed.